Inhabit our praises, God. Inhabit our worship today. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said amen. Amen. Let's everybody stand up to our feet. Let's begin to worship God. Just expressing our love to him this morning. Yes, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. The song says like this. Hey, Lord, I love you. Hey. Yes, I love you. Oh, how I love you. I really love you. Lord, I praise you. Yes, I praise you. Hey, oh, how I praise you. I really
Welcome to the house of the Lord. This is a worship service. We worship him in spirit and in truth. We welcome you today. If you're here in person or if you're joining us on Zoom or live stream, you are welcome. Make sure that you receive the word of God today. We will start with Psalms 138. I will praise thee with my whole heart. Before the gods will I sing praise unto thee. I will worship towards thy holy temple and praise thy name for thy loving kindness and for thy truth. For thou hast magnified thy word above thy name. So, Father, we thank you for the word of God today. In the name of Jesus, may we receive it in our hearts. May we walk it out in our lives. We give you all the praise and the honor and the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Don't forget to hit share the video. That's how we reach the world with the love of Jesus Christ. It's one of the tools that is given to us, and you never know where it's going to go. So please hit the share video. God bless you today. Welcome our pastor, Pastor Alvin Simpkins. Well, God is good. Glad that you're here. Come on, put your hands together. One more time, the Lord allowed us to live, to be here. We are grateful. We appreciate We appreciate all his help. Stretch your elbow all the way up with me this morning. Let's pray together. Father, thank you for all your goodness and all your mercy in our lives we just thank you for your word in ephesians 3 20 now under him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us in jesus name praise you for all that you are praise you for your many blessings we praise you for all that you are all your help somebody just shout help we need your help in every area of our lives. In Jesus' name I pray. Somebody say amen. amen. Give the Lord a hand clap for his goodness. We want to ask all of our kids, if you're under the age of 25, just come and stand at the altar this morning. If you're under the age of 25, come on down. We just want to pray a blessing over your life. And I want to ask Elder William Harris here, come and pronounce the blessing over your life on this day. Would you just give the Lord for a hand clap for all of our children that are coming to the altar. Come on, come on, come on. They're still coming. Thank you. Thank you for being in church. Thank you for being in the house of the Lord. Keep your children in church and watch how God bless them as they grow through their teen years. Father God, we just glorify you, oh God, for each and every one of our children that are standing here before you, oh God. They are standing here successful in life. They are standing here, Lord God, in your presence. Lord, we ask that our children will be able to bask in your presence, that they will give a heart for you, Lord God, that they will hunger and thirst after you, Father God. In the name of Jesus, that they will go after the ways of God, after the commandments of God, and after the statutes of God. We pray that no weapon formed against our children will be able to prosper, oh God. We pray that our children will not be influenced by the things of the world, oh God. That they will be loved by you, Father. Loved by their parents. Cherished by their parents. That our parents of our children will teach them the ways of God. In the name of Jesus, Lord, you have a plan for each and every one of these children that are standing here right now, Lord God. You have a plan. And Lord, we pray that our children will walk in the plan of God, that you have a destiny in store for each and every one of them. And Father, we pray that they will reach their destiny in you, Father God. The destiny of success, a destiny of prosperity will reign in their lives. And Lord, we declare it done in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Put your hands together. Just give the Lord a hand clap. Let's raise our hands and pronounce the blessing of the Lord over their lives. Whatever you say as a parent, and if you pronounce the blessing over their lives, it will happen in their life. Come on, everybody, say with me. Say, Lord, we pronounce the blessing over all of our children. Come on, say it again. Say, Lord, we pronounce the blessing over all of our children. They are blessed. Say it again. They are blessed. In Jesus' name, I pray. Somebody give the Lord a hand clap. 
God is a good God. Welcome, First Lady, as she give us the announcement. You may be seated. Children, you are dismissed and youth to your services. God bless you today. Good day to be in the house of the Lord. Do we have any first-time visitors? If you're here for the very first time, if you would just rave your hand in the air, the ushers have a packet we would like to share with you. God bless you. Let's give them a hand of welcome. Just keep that hand in the air until the ushers come back by. God bless you. Thank you so much. We see those hands back there. The ushers are on their way to you. Ushers, don't miss any of our guests. Give them another hand. Thank you for coming out today. God bless you. Thank you so much. Don't forget, Saturday, February 4th is the Roadmap to College. Oh, my goodness. That is going to be so valuable. It's going to save you money. You want to go somewhere that saves you money. Is that not correct? They're going to share with you all of the grants and scholarships and uh, financial avenues towards sending your kids to college. If they're in high school, you got to get ready now. You have to get ready now. If they're already in college, there is still funding available. So you want to go to this training on Saturday, February 4th and learn everything that you need to know. You'll meet in the foyer. Um, Esther and John, wave your hands, sign up with them. They're even going to give you some breakfast. How loving is that? So they're going to give you some breakfast. So sign up, let your friends and family know. Thank you so much for that. We will have membership on January 29th. If you haven't joined us, a body of faith, take a card, fill it out. We do life together. So we want you to be a part of what's happening here. Join the body of faith, and we will welcome you as a member on the 29th. Fill out the card, give it back to one of the ushers, and you will be blessed. Well, God bless you today. Here is our pastor, Pastor Alvin Simpkins. Amen. God is a good God. He loves you and so glad that you're here. It's going to be all right. No matter what you're going through, it's going to be all right. Elbow your neighbor and tell him it's going to be all right. Don't sweat it. Don't, don't panic. It's going to be all right. The Bible says in Psalm 100, come before his presence with singing. And so this morning, we want to take a minute and just sing to the Lord. I want you to join in. I want you to lift your voice. I want you to bless the Lord. We're going to do bread of heaven. We're going to do thank you, Lord, Minister Teresa, and then we're going to close it up with war. Let's take a minute and just sing to the Lord. You'll be amazed at how we often beg God, but we pause, we, we, we don't pause and just say, Lord, I'm just going to sing to you and tell you how much I love you. Will you just give the Lord a hand clap for the choir this morning as we take a minute and minister to you and minister to the Lord and worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness and singing.
storm and the rain, but the blood still stays the same. Whatever's going wrong, my warm clothes are on. I might be in a daze, but devil, you can't have my praise. No matter the attack, I won't turn back. This means. Somebody say the blood still works. Oh, the blood. Oh, the blood. The blood. Raise your hand and let's just bleed the blood. The blood. Somebody say the blood. The blood of Jesus over our lives today. In Jesus' name I pray. Somebody say amen.
God is a good God. He loves you. Take your Bible and go with me this morning to 2 Chronicles 7, 14. 2 Chronicles 7, 14. Familiar passage of scripture, but we must go there and we must uh, see what the Lord would have for us there today. Thank you for being in the house of the Lord. God loves you and he has a plan for your life. God is a good God. Somebody say the Lord loves me. 2 Chronicles 7, 14. 2 Chronicles 7, 14. My message today is everything happens by prayer. Don't you think that prayer doesn't work? It does work. Don't think that prayer doesn't make a difference. It does make a difference. 2 Chronicles 7, 14. If my people, which are what? Called by my name, shall what? Humble themselves and, and seek my face and turn from there. Then will I hear from heaven will forgive their sin and will what heal their land raise your hand this morning and let's pray together father thank you this morning thank you for your anointing thank you for your goodness and all your mercy we have come to worship you we have come to magnify you we're excited about jesus his death his burial and his resurrection that the words of our mouth and the meditation of our hearts may it be acceptable on this day in Jesus name I pray somebody say amen amen God bless you you may be seated God bless you you may be seated in the house of law nothing in life just happens to the Christian other the person that believes God nothing just happened everything happens by prayer and calling on the Lord and asking God for help somebody say help everything happens by daily calling on the Lord every day somebody say every day Somebody say every day. Every day. Your life will unfold by your prayer life. Don't think that prayer doesn't matter. It does matter. And your life will unfold as you pray every day. One of the things that the enemy has done in the church, in the life of most Christians, is he has stolen their prayer life. They don't call on the Lord anymore. They don't ask for help until somebody is in a desperate situation. But then it's too late. You got to have prayer going every day. Somebody say every day. You got to call every day, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and all day Sunday. You got to call on the Lord and ask for help. Somebody just shout, help. Your life will unfold. Your destiny, your purpose will unfold as you pray and as you trust the Lord every day. Every day as you pray, your destiny, your dreams will come to pass. Your future will unfold. You know, the goals that you have, the plans that you have made and laid out will work if you pray about it. Somebody say pray about it. Everything happens by prayer. Everything happens by prayer. And don't be ashamed to pray. Some people say, I don't sound like this person. It doesn't matter. God's not listening to what you're saying. He's looking at your heart. Man looks on the outward appearance, but God looks where? On the heart. He sees that you have a heart for him. So we need to pray every day because heaven waits on earth. You cannot afford to be silent in this hour. You cannot afford to leave it to chance. You, not, you cannot afford to just leave things where they are. You got to be bold about it. You got to be aggressive about it. You got to be determined about it. You got to be committed about it that I'm going to ask God for help. Somebody just shout, help! help! Everything in Jesus' life could be traced back to his prayer life. In Luke 18 and 1, he said, he said, you ought to always pray and not to what? Faint. Prayer with Jesus was everything. Prayer with Jesus was the most important thing. His resort in every emergency was to prayer. Where he went and when he was in trouble was to prayer. When he was perplexed, when he was hard pressed, when the Pharisees and the Sadducees got after him, he prayed and asked God for help. Somebody say help. All of his decisions about the disciples and who to choose came out of his prayer life. And you have to know that when he was attempted by the devil, he prayed and he used the word of God. When he was criticized by the Pharisees, he prayed. When he was lonely in the garden, he prayed. When he was powerless and he needed God's help, he prayed. When he had to calm the storms, he did what? 
prayed. He was not silent in the area of prayer. And I want to encourage you, unleash your prayer life. Unleash your call to the Lord and declare the Lord is my help. Somebody say help. You can be quiet if you want to. You'll come to a place in your life the Lord will bring you where you have to ask God for help. Somebody say help. And you cannot be silent and you cannot just, you know, think that it doesn't work. It does work. Ask the family of NFL player DeMar Hamlin. He's still here because of prayer. Died on the field, graveyard dead. Died again at the hospital, heart stopped, graveyard dead. But you and I, people around the nation were praying. Lord, save him. Don't let him die. He's too young to die. He's doing his dream. And God heard our prayer. And today, he's alive. Don't tell me that prayer doesn't work. You got it wrong. You need to raise your hand. Let's pray about it. Put it back. Everybody say, Lord, teach me how to pray. In Jesus' name, I pray. That needs to be your prayer every day, Mom, for your children that's in trouble. Dad, for your sons and for your loved ones, every day, Lord, hear my prayer. Jesus prayed when he was rejected on his way to the cross. He went to the garden. He stopped by the garden of Gethsemane, and he prayed and asked the Father to be with him. There was no emergency. There was no difficulty, no problem, or no necessity where Jesus was too busy to stop and pray. So you and I must take a lesson from his life. In your life, that all of you listening to me by Zoom, live stream, or here in the audience, there's an area of your life where you need God's help. Everybody here, there's an area of your life where you need God's help. Don't wait for it to happen. It's not going to happen. Don't wait for it to fix itself. It's not going to fix itself. You have to pray and say, Lord, I need your help. Somebody say help. Somebody say help. Every one of us got a situation in our lives where we need God's help. You got a situation in your life where you need God's help, just stretch your hand all the way up. Online, put a hand up on the screen. And everybody say with me, say, Lord, I need your help in my life. Everyday prayer makes the difference. Prayer makes the difference in the life of the believer. Prayer became the very breath that, breathes, that Jesus breathed. He became the very breath that he breathed every day he asked God for help was a great example for you and I every day we must pause and ask the Lord for help every day we must stop and say Lord I need your help with this matter I need your help in this situation Matthew 6 33 says seek ye first the kingdom his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. God will fix it if you'll pray about it. Somebody say, pray about it. Don't leave it the chance. Pray about it. Don't just wait for something to happen. Why are you going to pray about it? Because you are a part of God's sovereign plan. If God's going to answer anybody, he's going to answer you. Somebody say, the Lord's going to answer me. I'll say it again. The Lord's going to answer me. You're a part of his plan. You're part of his kingdom agenda. You're part of his goals for mankind. You're part of his, his overall, overall agenda for humanity. So when you call, the Lord's going to answer. How many of you ask God to do something and he's done it for you? Raise your hand. I know, I know. Because you are part. You're not just anybody. You are somebody. Elbow your neighbor and say, you're not just anybody. You are somebody. And when you call, God will answer. When you ask for help, God will say, here I am. Prayer oh, gives us revelation. It helps us with knowledge and understanding. It makes all the difference. By prayer, Jesus worked by day, and he worked and did what God called him to do. He'll work it out. Somebody say, pray about it. 
He'll work it out. Somebody said, pray about it. That's why you fast and pray. You're asking God for help. Somebody said, help. Don't worry about what the other people do. You make sure that you got your prayers going up. Don't worry about what somebody else is doing. You make sure that you are calling every day. Somebody say, every day. Every day you are saying, Lord, I need your help. See, we've gotten, some people have gotten money. And they think, now nah, I don't need to pray. Oh, yes, you do. Some things money can't buy. Some people have gotten position. And they think, no, nah, I don't need to do that. That did that when I was little. But now, no matter where you are in life and what position you're in, you need to pray. We need God's help. Somebody say, help. Matthew 7, 7, ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door will be open unto you. Ask. Somebody say, ask. God is waiting for you to ask. When you ask, ask for wisdom. Lord, I need wisdom. He says in James 1, 5, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that give it to all men and women liberally and upbraid not, and it shall be given to him. You got something that you need God to answer. Raise your hand. Let's pray about it. Everybody say, Lord, thank you for answering our prayer. Say it one more time. Now let's make it personal. Say, Lord, thank you for answering my prayers. I am blessed. Come on, let's declare it again. I am a part of your sovereign plan. Thank you for answering my prayer. See, don't live, don't live your life without wisdom. Live with wisdom every day. And wisdom come when you ask God for wisdom. Lord, I need you to give me wisdom on how to raise my daughters, how to raise my son. Lord, I need you to give, I need you to give me wisdom on how to get the job done. Open my eyes that I might see in 2023. Open my eyes that I might see that I'll not be blind, but I might see. For the Bible says in Ephesians 1.18, the eyes of your understanding will be open and enlightened as you pray every day. Somebody say every day. See, don't be lazy in your prayer life. Elbow your neighbor and say, don't be lazy. Elbow the person on the other side and say, don't be lazy in your prayer life. You want to find any area where Christians need improvement, all of us is in the area of prayer. Calling on the Lord. Because you are here because somebody prayed for you. You are here because some, your mama prayed for you. You are here because your dad called on the Lord. We're all here because somebody said, Lord, save them. Somebody say, thank you, Lord. So we cannot be lazy about our prayer lives. We cannot think that it doesn't matter. What would have happened to Elvis Presley's daughter if she would have had as much prayer as the other kid did? I'm going to leave that alone. Y'all looking at me funny. But you got to make sure you're surrounded by prayer. Surrounded by people that pray. It makes a difference in your life. You got to make sure that you are surrounded by people that call on the Lord. You got you to make sure that you are surrounded by people that pray every day. And you ought to thank God for anybody in your life that prays for you. You ought to thank God for anybody in your life that prays for you and ask God to help you. Somebody shout, help! Men, you got to pray over your families. Good families are no accident. Men, you cannot leave the prayer to your wives. If your wife is beating you praying, you are out of order. Oh, it's quiet up in this Presbyterian church up in here today. Somebody say amen. amen. But we must be men. That, Jesus said men are to always what? Pray, Pray and not to what? Pray. Faint. You got to call on the Lord. You got to be bold. You got to come to the throne and say, Lord, I'm not ashamed. I need your help. Somebody say help. help. You cannot be silent. It's a mandate for manhood. He said, we ought to be men of prayer. Pray over your daughter. Pray over your sons. Pray over your children. Pray over your life. Pray over your job. Pray over everything good in your life because we need God's help. Somebody say, I need his help. Your money can only carry you so far. 
And then you'll come to a wall where you need supernatural what? Help. Somebody say, help. That's why we pray. Jesus said this kind, Matthew 17, 21, this kind of devil, this kind of demon, this kind of evil force comes only by prayer and what? Fasting. There's some devils that will only move when you pray and when you fast. Don't leave it the chance. Somebody said, don't leave it the chance. Don't be silent. Don't be passive in your prayer life. Don't be lazy in your prayer life. You got to be bold. You got to be aggressive. You got to be, you got to be a person that says, I'm going to do it and I'm going to trust God that he's going to hear me and he's going to answer my prayer. Raise your hand with me and let's pray about it. On Zoom, on live stream, put them up. Everybody say, Lord, teach me how to pray. Say it again. Say, Lord, teach me how to pray. Say it again, Lord, teach me how to pray. In Jesus' name I pray. Every day, you got to ask God for help. Somebody say help. Every day, you got to ask God for help. Somebody say help. We cannot be lazy in our prayer life. Somebody say amen. Three things real quick that help, helps us. And three things that will help us to understand better about prayer. Number one. By prayer, we defeat the enemy. Every one of you, the enemy is going to attack you. If he hasn't already, he will. He's on his way. And you better learn how to pray. Plead the blood, fast, and ask God to rebuke the devourer. Somebody say the blood. That's why we sing them old blood songs. The blood still works. Oh, it still works. Don't believe, the, the, don't believe in people that say it doesn't work. The Bible says we overcome him by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. Somebody say the blood. blood. The blood still works. We gotta, we, we, by prayer, we defeat the enemy. Run him off. Somebody say run him off. Somebody say run him off. Jesus said in Matthew 17, 21, how be it this kind goes not out but by prayer and fasting. That you have to know there are forces that won't move in your life until you start praying and asking God for help. And you cannot be slowful, lazy, or unconcerned about your prayer life. You must be aggressive. Don't worry about what people say. You just pray. Somebody said, pray now. The Bible says in James 4, 7, submit yourselves to God. Resist the devil and he'll flee from you. You resist him by praying every day. Lord, I need your help. Somebody say, I need your help. Somebody say, I need your help. Keep on praying about it. You're going through a difficult situation, keep on praying about it. How many of you are going through a situation in your life where you need God's help? To keep on praying about it. Don't be silent. Wake up at night, pray about it. Get up in the morning and pray about it. Keep praying about it all day long. Don't believe the person that says, he already know what my need is, so I'm, I've already told him. That's not wisdom. The Bible says, ask, seek, and knock. Three dimensions of prayer. Ask, seek, and what? Knock. And you have to be aggressive about it. Somebody said, be aggressive about it. Our victory in life over the devil comes through daily prayer and divine connection with God. When you call, he hears you, he knows you, and you, and he answers you. When you call, when you call, God is there for you, and he's going to help you. Somebody say, help. Prayer. Prayer defeats the devil, runs him off from your life. Just pray about it. It loosens the bands of wickedness, the sin of wickedness, the stronghold of bondages, the hooks of the enemy. Prayer, break off the curses, old generational curses that come down your family line. Break the curse by praying against it every day, by asking God for help. Somebody say, help. All the women in your family are divorced. But no, you ought, you ought to be the one that says, I'm going to have a successful life. I'm going to have a successful marriage. I'm going to pray every day. The blood. Somebody shout, the blood. Men, you are the only guy in your family that don't have a wife. 
Oh, you need to ask God for help. I didn't say a girlfriend. There's a difference between a girlfriend and a wife. Wish I had time to talk about it. And there's a lot of difference from the girl on the street, the diva, and a wife. A wife is in a whole nother realm all by herself. But a lot of women want to be, they want to be cougars. They want to be divas. They want to be hoochie mama. They just want to be something. But men, you don't need any of that. You need a wife. The Bible says a wise woman, a wise wife builds her house. But a foolish woman do what? Tear it down with her own hands. The blood. Somebody say, the blood. Why, why do we pray? We pray because prayer defeats the devil, number one. Runs him off from our lives. Somebody say amen. We, it run him off. Somebody say run him off. Number two, the reason why we pray is because prayer brings helps to bring healing into our lives. There was a study done that a man that prayed every day, and I'm in the hospital, a man that didn't pray. The man that prayed every day got out two weeks ahead of time and the man that didn't pray. When you are sick, listen to the pastor. When you are sick, you have to have a prayer life. When, if you can't pray, put it up on your wall. Put it up around you. Pray. Somebody said pray. James 5 and 15 says, and The prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall what? Raise them up. And if he have committed sin, they shall be what? Forgiven him. Why pray? We rebuke the devourer and run the devil off from our lives by prayer. And number two, we pray. Prayer help the sick to get healed. Somebody said pray now. Somebody said pray now. Don't be that new generation of Christians that, don't, that think that prayer doesn't work. I don't want to be associated with those guys that think that prayer doesn't work. I get calls all the time. Can I just tell you? I get calls all the time. Pastor Alvin, can you come to our prayer meeting? No. Because you're only going to pray one time. One time is not enough. Got a text the other day. Would you come to our prayer meeting? No. You got to pray every day. That's what we do here at Emmanuel Christians and on our prayer line every day. Lord, we need your help. You got to have a push. Somebody say a push. You want your daughter to be saved, you got to have a prayer push every day. You got to call every day. You got to implore the Lord when? Every day. You got to ask God for help when? Every day. You can't just pray one time. I'm honored that you called me and asked me to come to your prayer meeting whole bunch of other pastors going to be there. Some special people going to be there. I'm sure it will be. But guess what? I don't tell them this. I said in my mind, I ain't going to be there. <laughs> it's the Christian that has a constant push every day that makes the difference in the spirit realm. You'll be praying for years and it seems like nothing's happening. Then all of a sudden, bam, one day, the heavens are open on your behalf. Keep on calling. Keep on coming. Keep on asking God for help. And if you are sick and got a bad diagnosis, you need to get around a prayer team that pray every day. The blood. Somebody say the blood. I've been around this prayer ministry for a long time. Before I became a pastor, I was involved in prayer. When I got hired at Promise Keepers, I got hired as a, as a, as a director, and then I got moved to the prayer department. Because I, I told them, you, got, you guys got to pray. If you're going to reach men, you got to pray. And I became loud and aggressive. And they said, well, we want you to lead us. I said, okay, I'll lead you. When we started this church, I've been praying about it for years. We're not here by accident. We're on God's sovereign timetable. Somebody say amen. And if you pray and join us, you watch how your life will change. 
But, but you have to pray. If you are sick, you got something in your body that won't heal. You got something in your life, in your body that's working. The doctor's giving you a bad diet. You got to pray. And you got to have a prayer team around you that pray. Medicine is not enough. Medicine is never enough. Because it does more damage than it does good sometimes. And that's why you got to pray. Somebody said, pray now. Somebody said, pray now. Doctor gave you a bad diagnosis. You better have a prayer. Build your, first thing, build your prayer team. Five or six people that pray every day. Lord, I need your help. Somebody say help. Somebody say help. By prayer, we get healing into our lives. He said the prayer of faith shall save the sick. And the Lord himself will raise them up. And you have to know, that's emotional, emotional illness, physical illness, depression, discouragement, bondages, whatever the sickness is, you got to pray about it. You got to pray about it. Somebody said pray about it. Acts 10, 38, how God anointed Jesus Christ with the Holy Ghost and with power. And he went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. A lot of illnesses are nothing but demonic depression. And when you start praying and pleading the blood and calling on the Lord, your body, your heart beats different. Your mind thinks differently. Your blood flows differently. Your organs operate differently. Somebody shout the blood. Why are you silent? The doctor has given you a bad report and then you're still silent. Just taking medicine. Either prayer becomes your food or your medicine becomes your food. Let me say it again. Either prayer becomes your food or your medicine becomes your food. And when medicine becomes your food, you're going to die. Oh, y'all looking at me funny. You're going to die if medicine becomes your food. That's why we got to say, Lord, I need your help. Somebody say, Lord, I need your help. I need your help. If you're weak and feeble, you got to pray. Somebody say, pray now. Somebody say, pray now. Somebody say, pray now. Prayer brings healing into your body. Raise your hand and say, I am healed. Come on, say it again. I am healed. One more time. I am delivered. In Jesus' name, I pray. Pray against sickness, the spirit of infirmity, and disease. Pray against it. Plead the blood. Somebody say the blood. The pains and the hurts of life. Got to pray against it. Got to pray against it. Sickness, brokenness. When you wake up, I just feel bad. You know? Yeah, I went by to pray with some people some time ago, and the first thing I said, how you doing today? Pastor, I just feel bad. Well, you, you got to pray. Come on, let's pray about it. Anointing them with oil. Prayed about it. I feel better now. I know you do. Because prayer is an entity that's supernatural, and it touches every part of our body. Touches our brain cells. It causes our hearts to beat different. Cause our organs to move different. Somebody say, pray now. Yeah. Somebody say, pray now. Yeah. Everything happens by prayer when you are a Christian. By prayer, number one, we run off the devil. And number two, prayer brings healing into our lives. I told you the story a hundred times over the years. They pushed my mom to the end of the hall. I told her that we, that we've done all we can do. And she's going to die. As a family, we just started praying. That's why I believe in prayer. I've seen it work. I've seen it work in my family. I've seen it work in my children's life. I've seen it work in every area of my life. And we started praying. Lord, we need your help. See, some people are too pretty to call for help. Some people, that makeup is too nice to call for help. But when you really start praying, it will touch your emotions. It will touch your heart. It will touch your mind. And before you know it, it will fill your eyes with tears. Because, Lord, 
I need your help. And you're my only help. He pushed it to the end of the hall. We started praying. As a family, don't let her die. Don't let her die. And as a family, see, that's one thing the enemy has stolen from families is prayer time. The old saying, the family that prays together, what? It's true. The devil don't want you praying with your family. He don't want you getting along. He wants somebody to have a beef. He wants somebody upset. He wants somebody with a chip on their shoulder. He wants somebody that don't want to speak to Ray Ray and Pookie. Ray Ray and Pookie might still be out there doing drugs, but yet you got to pray for them. Because God's going to change their heart. God's going to turn them around. The one thing the enemy has stolen from the family is prayer. Men don't pray for their wife, but they're quick to ask her to come over here. And blah, 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 blah. Somebody say, pray now. Somebody say, pray now. I've gotten too old for foolishness. I've been doing this for a long time. I've seen all the tricks. I just want to be around somebody that know how to pray. I just want to be around a few people that know how to call on the Lord. I want to be around some men that's not ashamed to pray. I want to be around some ladies that will take their earrings off and say, for God I live and for God I die. I am blessed. Raise your hand in this house and say, I am blessed. In Jesus' name I pray. Prayer makes the difference in the life of the believer. That's why we pray and fast 40 days. It takes you 20 days to get your mind adjusted. Then it takes you another five days for your body to clear out all the crud that you put in it. Somebody say amen. amen. I close with number three. Number one, why pray? Because prayer helps you to defeat the devil. Number two, why pray? Because prayer brings healing to your body. Somebody say amen. amen. And I close with number three. Why pray? Because by prayer, no bill can live in your life. Amen. Now let me just take my time right here and unpack this. Why pray? Because no bill can live in your life. The Bible says in 2 Chronicles 26 and 5, Uzziah, he raised him up from a little kid. Raised Uzziah up from a little boy. And it says, and then God gave him everything. Read the story of 2 Chronicles 26. The story of Uzziah. Uzziah was bad. He built wells in the desert. He built the, built the best places. Not only that, but he had the latest technology, engines that were made by cunning men. And the Bible says in 2 Chronicles 26 and 5, as long as he sought the Lord, God made him to prosper. As long. I need you to underline that in your Bible. 2 Chronicles 26 and 5. It's a defining verse. As long as he sought the Lord, God made him to what? Prosper. No bill can live in your life when you pray about it. You may be in debt today, but if you keep on praying, Lord, help me. God's going to help you to pay him off. He says, oh, no man, nothing. Matthew 7, 7, ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door will be what? Open unto you. And he said, I crown it the year with my goodness. Psalm 65, 11. Some of the greatest things that have happened in America has happened through prayer. Somebody say amen. Church of God in Christ, the place that I grew up, love it. Don't love the mess, but I love the people. It was a place started where a man that had no education just prayed and asked God for help. 
Somebody say help. And God heard and answered his prayer. And today it's still going. Hundreds of years later. See, your prayers are not answered just for the day. They're answered for years, for generations. Some of the prayers I have prayed, I will not see the answer. Somebody say amen. amen. That's why you got to pray about your unborn kids. You got to pray about your daughter. She may be a little girl today, but she's going to have kids one day. You got to say the blood over her children. Generations that you may never see, but you're praying for them. Somebody say, I am. A part of God's sovereign plan. No bill can live in your life. That's why I'm a tither. I am a tither. Because I understand the principles. Somebody say amen. amen. Psalm 68, 19, it says daily. Blessed be the Lord who daily loaded us with his benefits. Every day, God blesses you. So I'm going to say, Lord, I thank you. You're going to eat the good of the land. Just wait when you get off this fast. Some of y'all going to go, oh, y'all already, already got your reservation. I know you do. Y'all, see, I see the hands. They already got their reservation at Shanahan. They already got their reservation at the biggest steakhouse. They already got their reservations at five-star restaurant. I know you do. But the Bible said you're going to, if you're willing and obedient, you'll eat the good of the land. Nothing but the best. But finish the fast. Don't give in to a Burger King now. David said, I've been young and I'm old. And I've never seen the righteous forsaken. Or their seed, what? Begging for bread. You got to know when you pray. You got to pray over your money. You got to ask God to help you with your finances. Somebody say help. Somebody say help. Pray over your money. Pray over your credit. Pray over your investments. Pray over your property. Pray over your job. Pray over your careers. The devil will want to run you off your job. Man, sir, listen to me. The devil want to run you off your job. Then you got to be wise. Get to work ahead of time. Stay sometime. You got to stay late. Just to get the job done. Because if you run you off your job, it's going to mess up your money. Somebody said, don't mess up the money. Somebody said, don't mess up the money. First thing that husband and wives do when they start fighting is mess up the money. That's the last thing they should do. Somebody said, don't mess up the money. By prayer, no bill can live in your life. I decreed over your life. I prophesied over your life. No bill. Raise your hand and let's receive it. Everybody say, Lord, I declare that no bill can live in my life. Say it again. No bill can live in my life. I am blessed. Come on, say it. I am blessed. Deuteronomy 11 and verse number 12. God says, from the, told them from the beginning of the year to the end of the year, all year long, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to take care of you. But you got to obey, you got to trust me, and you got to be faithful. Then he told them in Deuteronomy 11 and 1, he says, I'll make you a thousand times so much more. So you got to receive the thousandfold blessing. Pray it into your life. The thousandfold blessing that's coming into my life. I receive it. Somebody say, I receive it. Somebody say, I receive it. You got to declare. You got to pray and declare that my income today is going to be my tithe tomorrow. Somebody put it on the screen for me. Help me out. My income today is going to be my tithe tomorrow. You don't have time for being broke. So we ask God for help. We've all been broke. Who loves and who want to go back to brokenness? Who want to go back to the washing machine at the wash house? Who want to go back to the bus stop in the cold mornings? Who want to go back 
to the days when you didn't have money to buy a decent pair of shoes? Who want to go back to the days when you didn't have money to buy your own house? You were living in the apartment. We've all been there. But didn't the Lord bring you out? Didn't the Lord help you and give you a good house? Didn't the Lord give you a decent car? You are blessed. Somebody say, I am blessed. So we got to declare, we got to pray every day. Lord, thank you for all your blessings. Somebody just raise your hand and say, thank you for all your blessings. If you don't know what else to say, just say thank you. That's why we love that song, thank you, Lord. Because if you don't know how to theologically lay out your prayer, just say thank you. If you don't know how to call, if you don't know how to articulate it, just say I'm grateful and I love you because you've been good to my life. So I want to say thank you. No bill can live when you pray every day. How many of you prayed, off, prayed about a bill and the Lord helped you pay it off? Let me see your hand. He'll do it. No bill can live. No bill can live. The Lord will help you. Money will come to you. People will call you out of the blue and help you. Somebody say amen. Supernatural debt cancellation will happen in your life. It's not just a phrase. It's not just something that we say. It is real. And it will happen in your life. But you got to pray. Lord, I need your help. You can't be silent. Can't be ashamed to pray. You can't be too concerned about what people think. They can't help you. You go to, I go to Walmart sometime and I see people and they ask me for prayer. I just stop right there in the, in the aisle and pray for them loud. Lord, help them. People walking by stop. I don't care what those people say. They can't help me. I need God's help. If God doesn't help me pastor this church, it would be a mess. I need God's help. You don't have time for games. You don't have time for foolishness. You don't have time for arguments. We need God's help. Raise your hand with us, pastor. Say, Lord, I need your help. Come on, say it again. Say, Lord. I need your help. And that's why we pray. It defeats the devil. Run him off from our lives. It brings healing into our lives. Prayer, exercise, eating right, and medicine bring healing to your life. Somebody say amen. amen. You just can't go to the doctor and then suck down pills every day. They're going to kill you. Somebody say amen. You got to ask God for help. Somebody say help. And God will give you creative ideas on how to take care of yourself. You've come too far to not finish the journey. How many of you know you come too far not to finish living out your life? How many of you know you've been, you've been here long enough? You don't want to die young, premature. You come too far not to finish the journey. The Lord is on your side. That's why we pray and fast. The Lord said, I will extend your life. I'll give you a long life. I'll bless you. I'll help you. The Lord is the giver of life. We pray because we are grateful and thankful. We pray because we understand that we would have never made it without God's help. Maybe you had all the things that you need and all the support and the protection you need. But some of us wouldn't have made it without the Lord's help. So we have to call. We have to pray. Some of us wouldn't have made it. The childhood disease would have destroyed us. The childhood illness would have destroyed us. We wouldn't have made it without God's help. So when you hear somebody praying loud, just join in. Some people say, oh, they too loud. They told me, Alvin, you too loud. I said, I don't care. But when the day we got laid off and nobody had a job, a whole lot of people came by my cubicle saying, pray for me. See, don't worry about what people think. 
Don't worry about what they say. Make it up in your mind. I'm going to be a person of prayer. I'm going to call on the Lord because I need his help. Prayer with a grateful heart pleases God. Prayer with a grateful heart pleases God. Prayer becomes easy when you are thankful, when you appreciate God. Prayer becomes easy when you know death came and showed up in your life and the Lord extended you. Prayer becomes easy when you know that you would have never made it if it had not been the Lord on your side. Prayer becomes easy when you know your husband could have left you or your wife could have went off with Billy Bob. But the Lord touched their heart. Prayer becomes easy when you make up in your mind, I don't care what people think. We need God's help. Somebody say help. Prayer becomes easy when you look back over your life and you can see the Lord brought you. The Lord helped you. It was the Lord that saved your son. It was the Lord that saved your daughter. Prayer becomes easy when you know the Lord gave you a job. When you didn't have the qualifications or when he could have given it to somebody else. Prayer becomes easy when you know if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side. You would have never made it. Prayer becomes easy when you know you couldn't have woke up from the surgery. The Lord woke you up. Prayer becomes easy when you know if it had not been for the Lord who was on your side, you would have never made it. Prayer becomes easy when you know your daughter would have never came home. Your son would have never came home from Afghanistan, from Iraq. Prayer becomes easy because the Lord brought him back. Prayer becomes easy when the Lord is on your side. When the Lord answers your prayer. Somebody say, I am blessed. Oh, I feel like preaching it here. Prayer becomes easy. When you look back over your life and you declare, if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, I would have never made it. Prayer becomes easy. When I look out at the church and I see the Lord sent you here, the Lord sent your family, you are blessed. Prayer becomes easy. Somebody say easy. When you are thankful. Thank you. I am blessed. Prayer becomes easy. When you know the cancer could have taken you out. The stroke could have taken you out. The heart attack could have taken you out. Prayer becomes easy. When you know it was the Lord. The Lord is my help. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Making me to lie down. In green pasture. Leading me beside. The still waters. He restores my soul. Leading me in the path of righteousness. For his name's sake. Yea though. I walk through the valley. Of the shadow of death. I will feel no evil. For thou art with me. Prayer becomes easy when you give God the praise for what he's already done. Prayer becomes easy when you know the Lord answered my prayer. The Lord was there for me. I am blessed. Somebody help me say, I am blessed. Prayer becomes easy. Because the Lord is on my side. Somebody say, I am blessed. Now just give the Lord. 
Give the Lord. Give the Lord. Give him a hand clap. Give the Lord. A praise. Give the Lord. Glory. Because he brought you from a mighty long way. He brought you through the court system. Prayer become easy because the Lord touched the judge's heart. Oh, somebody say, I am blessed. Help me say, I am blessed. One more time, I am blessed in Jesus' name. Just give the Lord a praise. Just give the Lord a praise, church. Just give the Lord a praise. Oh, just give him a praise. Give him a praise. Give him a praise. Pray. Become easy. When you know it was the Lord. When you know it was the Lord. Pray. Become easy. When you know the Lord. Ran the devil off from your daughter, from your son, from your children, from your marriage, from your job, from your health. Pray. Become easy. The Lord is our help. Raise your hands all over the house and everybody say, Lord, teach me how to pray. Say it again, Lord, teach me how to pray. Say it again, Lord, teach me how to pray. Stretch your elbow all the way up. Everybody say, Lord, teach me how to pray. I'm sorry. For my prayerlessness. Teach me how to pray. Teach me how to call on the Lord. I need your help. I need your help. In the name of Jesus. You got an area of your life where you need the Lord to answer you in prayer. She says, come and stand with me at the altar. Come on down. You got an area of your life where you need the Lord. It's your daughter. It's your son. It's your job. It's whatever. It's your finances. You got an area of your life where you need the Lord to move. You need the Lord to help you. Somebody say help. Come on. On live stream, you got an area of your, in your life, just put a hand up. Lord, I need your help. Everything in the kingdom of God moves by prayer. Everything in the kingdom of God moves by prayer. Nothing just happens. Everything moves by prayer. Every blessing, every opportunity, every favor, every answer to God, everything moves by prayer. Lest you think it's something else, you got it wrong. Look back over your life. Your greatest blessings came through prayer. Look back over your life. Your greatest miracles came through prayers. Look back over your life. Your greatest victories. Didn't it come through what? Came through prayer, sir. Don't you be silent. Don't you be silent. The greatest miracle came through prayer. Jesus went to the cross, but he would have never made it without going to the garden first. Lord, teach us how to pray. Teach us how to pray. Put your hand on your neighbor's shoulder. Gently lay your hand on his shoulder. And everybody say with me, say, Lord, teach us how to pray. Say it again, say, Lord, teach us how to pray. Come on one more time, say, Lord, teach me how to pray. Say it one more time, say, Lord, I'm sorry for my silence. Say it again. Say, Lord, I rededicate to a life of prayer. I rededicate to the commitment to pray every day. Thank you. The problem is solved. Thank you. The answer is on the way. Thank you. The miracle is already here. I am an answer 
to prayer. Say it again. I am an answer to prayer. Lay your hands on somebody's shoulder and say, Lord, answer their prayer. In the name of Jesus. Father, thank you for hearing our prayer today. Forgive us for times when we didn't pray. Forgive us for times when we tried to do it our own way. Forgive us for times we tried to build a business ourselves. Forgive us for times when we try to do the job on our own. Forgive us for times when we try to raise our kids by ourselves. Forgive us for times we try to make the marriage work. We need your help. Somebody just shout, help. Forgive us for thinking that our experience was enough for the job. Forgive us for thinking our education was enough for the job. Forgive us for thinking that we know how to handle it. Lord, we need your help. We join the disciples today when they say, Lord, teach us how to pray. Teach us how to pray. Teach us how to call on your name. Teach this church how to pray and we'll change this city. Teach this church how to pray and we'll change families. Teach this church how to pray and we'll change generations. Teach this church how to pray and we'll change eternity. Teach us. Everybody say, Lord, teach me how to pray. In the name of Jesus, we love you, Lord, with all of our heart. Raise your hands all over the house. And everybody say with me, say, Lord, teach me how to pray. I am sorry for my silence. I am sorry for my prayerlessness. I am sorry for trying to do it myself. I need your help. I need your strength. Thank you, Jesus, for all your help. Thank you. You are my prayer partner. You ever lived to make intercession for the saints. I rededicate. I recommit my family, my children, my life, all that I have to prayer. I will call on the Lord. Somebody say, I will call on the Lord. Somebody say, Jesus, Jesus. If you're not ashamed, Jesus. If you're not embarrassed, Jesus. If you're not too humiliated, Jesus. Jesus, Mary's baby. Jesus, the lily of the valley. Jesus, the bright and the morning star. Jesus, Jesus. In Jesus' name I pray. Somebody say amen. Turn around and give your neighbor a hug and say, you're a prayer partner. You're my prayer partner. You're my prayer partner. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Teach us how to pray. 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 In the name of Jesus. Teach us how to pray. In Jesus' name. Teach our church how to pray. Teach our choir how to pray. Teach the ushers how to pray. Teach the deacons and teach the, the ushers and the greeters how to pray. Teach the ministers how to pray. Teach the children workers how to pray. Teach us, Lord. Teach the youth leaders how to pray. Oh! We renounce the curse of prayerlessness. We renounce the curse of prayerlessness. Lord, teach us how to pray. Everybody raise your hand with me and say, Lord, teach me how to pray. One more time. Lord, teach me how to pray. I am your child. Teach me how to pray. In Jesus' name I pray. Somebody say amen. Will you just give the Lord a hand clap? Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you for all your help. Thank you. Let's just take a minute and give him a thanks. Thank you for all your help. Come on and put your hands together. Thank you. The Lord answered your prayer. Thank you. The Lord touched your life. Thank you. Thank you. Prayer.
will be answered by God from a thankful heart. Call on the Lord. Somebody say thank you. Acts 4.12, neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name given under heaven among men. Whereby we must be saved. Your lost loved ones, you got to pray for them. Don't fuss at them. Don't cuss at them. Don't tell them how to, they're going to hell. Just pray for them. Every day. Every day. David says in Psalm 55, morning, noon, and night will I cry aloud. And the Lord will hear my prayer. Daily prayer. Somebody said daily prayer. It's not enough just to call one day a week. Not enough. Enemy will eat your lunch. Every day. Somebody say every day. Somebody say every day. Somebody say every day. In Acts 2.21, And it shall come to pass, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Somebody say every day. This year, pray all year long and watch your life at the end of the year. You'll be at a much better place. You'll have more money. You'll, you'll be, have better health all year long. Pray. Somebody said pray. And ask God for help. And watch the Lord work your life. Your life is in God's hand. Raise your hand. Let's pray for our loved ones. Maybe you've never given your heart to the Lord. This is the greatest decision that you'll ever make. Greatest decision you'll never ever make. Give your heart to the Lord. Pray for your loved ones. They think they got it going on. They don't know. They're living by the food spirit. A lot of people live by the food spirit. And the enemy goal is to fool and to deceive us. But the Bible says that I'm going to see the enemy afar off in 2023. I'm going to see. Not going to be blindsided. Not going to be caught off guard. Open my eyes that I might see. For your loved ones, raise your hands. And everybody say it with me. Say, Lord, save them. Come on, say it again. Say, Lord, save them. One more time. Say, Lord, deliver them. One more time. Say, Lord, set them free. Someone, one more time. Say, Lord, we need your help. Say it again. Lord, we need your help. In Jesus' name I pray. Give the Lord a hand clap. He's going to do it. It's already done. He's going to do it. Hey. Uh, I need you to survive. Don't say it. You need God. Let me help you. Online, lest you think you can stay home and you don't need the Lord. You need the Lord. Money is never enough. When you die, your kids going to sell your house real fast. They're going to get that furniture out and take it to the dump real fast. It's outdated. It's old school. And the realtor is going to tell you, you got to update your house. Don't stay there in that house. You need to be in the house of the Lord. You need to be in the house of the Lord. God says, my ears are open and my eyes are attentive to the prayers that are made in this place. When you're going through a difficulty in your life, come by the house of the Lord. Come to the altar and just say, Lord, I need your help. When you're going through problems in your life, find solace in the house of the Lord. Raise your hands with me and everybody. Say, Lord, I give unto you my whole life. I rededicate it. My children, my family, my home, everything I have to you. Thank you. My life will never be the same. I am a part of the sovereign plan of Almighty God. In Jesus' name I pray. Somebody say amen. Bless you. Give the Lord a hand clap for his goodness. You may be seated in the house of the Lord. I have you out in about five minutes because I know your team is playing today. I have you out in a few minutes. Somebody say amen. Would you just join with us this year and just pray? If you've never been on the prayer line, I would ask you to join us on the prayer line. We just ask God for help. I got people on the East Coast that's on the prayer line praying. I got people down in Texas. I got people down South. 
they get on the prayer line. I got several pastors to get on and just pray with us. No agenda. We just need God. We just need the Lord's help. Somebody say amen. You can find the information on the website. But I just want you to know, if you help us this year, to just say, I'm going to pray all year long. Somebody say, all year long. Somebody say, all year long. Watch your life at the end of the year. Somebody say amen. So this, this morning, us just come forward, give everybody an envelope. Not only just pray, but give your tithes and give offerings and partner with God, and he'll bless your life. Jesus taught his disciples about giving. He taught them about money. He said to them, Matthew 6, 25. Therefore, I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat or what you shall drink. Nor yet for your body, what you shall put on. Is not life more than meat and the body more than raiment. Then he said, behold, look at the fowl of the air. For they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather in the barns. And yet your heavenly father feedeth them. Are you not much better than they? God will take care of you. Don't be afraid. Be a tither. I'm a tither. Somebody say amen. Be a tither. Give God what's belong to him. He'll bless your job. When others are laid off, you'll still be working. Somebody say amen. I got a nephew that lives in California. And he said, uncle, everybody got a call. He said they laid off 50 plus people. And they all got called and came back to the other cubicles crying. He said, I was waiting for my call because he thought he was going to get laid off. But he said, I just prayed. I just prayed and asked God for help. And he said, the call came. And they came and they called me and I went in. And he said, I sat down and I was expecting to go back and clean out my cubicle. But he said, they told me, you don't have to worry about it. Your job is safe. Your job is secure. You're going to be all right. And he said, that's all they said. And he got up and left and went back to his desk. And everybody else was crying. And he's still there today. When you put God first, he'll look out for you. And that call might come. But it's going to be an affirming call. It's going to be a call of affirmation. It's going to be a call of declaration that God is on your side and the Lord is your help. This is not the hour to not tithe. Let me help you. I'm not trying to get anything from you. I want to help you as a pastor. How can they heal without the preacher? How can he preach except God sent him? If I could do another job, I would. But I can't. Because every weekend I got to be here. You can fly out on a weekend. Baco texted me this morning. Pastor, I am in Dallas, Texas. How are you? Have a good time at church today. But I can't be in Dallas, Texas. I got to be here to preach. Now let me help you. When you partner with God, he'll bless your life. And he'll help you. Somebody say amen. If you're making our check, make it payable to Emmanuel Christian Center or ECC. You'll get record of your giving. But not only that, God will bless your life. Somebody say, I'm blessed. And then partner with God and become a tithing covenant. On your way out, pick one of these up. The ushers will have it. The tithing covenant says that everything I get, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to partner with God. Couples, let me help you. You'll be amazed at how God will bless your children when you partner and you tie together as a couple. There's always, the devil will always set up in a family. One person have a heart to tie. And the other person will say, oh, I don't think so. I don't want to give that. I don't want to do that. Let me just help you. If you want to be blessed, if you want God's help, partner together. Together. And we tie together. And then when God opens the windows, it flows on both of you. Somebody say amen. That's the enemy. If one has a heart to give and the other one has a, has a heart, I don't, I don't, that's too much. It's not too much. It's not too much when you're standing by the bedside of your son or your daughter who really need God. It's not too much. It's not too much. It's not too much when you don't have a job. It's not too much 
when you don't know where your next meal is going to come from. It's not too much. Let me help you as a pastor. I would have never made it in ministry without tithing. All my ministerial life, I have been a tither. And God has blessed me. And God has taken care of my family. And I want to tell you, I got a brand new grandbaby coming. Josh and Veronica go have a baby. In my prayer notebook, I've been praying for that baby for over three years before they got married. When I believed they were going to get married, I started praying. I said, Lord, from generation to generation, thou art God. Somebody say amen. We don't know the name. We don't know the sex. We don't know any of that. But we know that it's on the way. Somebody say amen. And God will bless your family. That's why families are destroyed and separated and devoured. Because we think that what we have is more important than giving to God. Let me just help somebody. You think that the money you have is more important than giving to God. But yet you'll spend $10,000 on a cruise just like that. You go to Hawaii. Hawaii's not cheap. I want a trip there for my honeymoon. It won't, and, you don't, and you won't think about it. Somebody say amen. But I made it in my mind. I'm going to give God my tithe. And the Lord has blessed my life. Somebody say amen. Just this week, I got another invitation to go to Israel. Now I'm going to go there. Somebody say amen. I'm not ready to go to Africa yet. But I'm, a, I'm, I'm, I'm getting there. Y'all pray for me. Somebody say the blood. Somebody say the blood. Let me help you. With these gas prices, with the prices of eggs, you got to ask God for help. With these heating bills, you got to ask God for help. With companies being bought up by foreign nationals, you got to ask God for help. Because when they buy up American companies, the first thing they do is get rid of all of you. You got to ask the Lord for help. Somebody say help. If, you, if you're giving on your debit card or your credit card, I just want you to be blessed. Why do I take this time to talk to you? You are the most important people in my life. Other than my family. Other than my wife, my kids, you are the most important people in my life. So I want you to be blessed. Somebody say amen. I'm not trying to get anything from you. I'm trying to get something to you. How can they heal without the preacher? How can he preach except he be sent? I've been doing this for over 25 years, full time. And the Lord has blessed my life. Stand up on your feet and let's give to the Lord. Hold your gifts up to the Lord. And everybody say with me, say, Lord, I give into your kingdom. Come on, say it again. Say, Lord, I give into your kingdom. I'm going forward in every area of my life. Thank you. I have seed to sow in every area of my life. I am blessed. Thank you for all your help. Thank you for all your favor. I will pray and trust in the Lord. And no bill can live in my life. I am blessed. In Jesus' name I pray. Somebody say amen. You'll give it coming late on the altar as an act of faith. Yes. 
highly favored. Raise your hands with me and let's pray together. Father, thank you for your word. The grass with the flower fade, but the word of God will stand forever in our lives. God bless you. I'll see you on Wednesday night. Got a great message. Let's go forward this year. Finish the fast. You are doing great. Just give yourselves a hand clap and pass the Kyle Speller. Come and pronounce the blessing. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying unto Aaron, speak unto Aaron and unto his son, saying, On this wise ye shall bless the children of Israel, saying unto them, The Lord bless thee, and the Lord keep thee. The Lord make his face to shine upon thee, and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee, and give thee peace. And they shall put my name upon the children of Israel, and I will bless them. And they shall put my name upon the children, the sons and daughters of Emmanuel, and I will bless them. Father, we just thank you, Lord God, for this message. We thank you for the messenger, Lord God. Holy Spirit, we ask that you would remind us all week long to seek your face in prayer. Father, strengthen our prayer life, Lord God, as we pray to you each and every day. Help us to join on the prayer line, Lord God. Help us to pray without ceasing in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you that you put your name on us, Lord God. And Holy Spirit, we just want to say thank you that the devil is defeated in each and every one of our lives. I pray the blood of Jesus over each and every one of us. The blood of Jesus over our families. The blood of Jesus over our children. The blood of Jesus over our children's children. In the name of Jesus, cover us and keep us until we meet again. We love you and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you, family. Oh, 
Christians in the live stream. You have a blessed week in Jesus' name.